Hey everybody, welcome back to our Audacious Church devotions for another day. January the 4th, we're talking about Here Comes the Dreamer, been looking at the life of Joseph. And I want to spend some time with you talking about setbacks in the middle of a dream. Remember that Joseph had a dream, but he had some setbacks. Verse 18 of chapter 37 in Genesis says this, But the brothers saw Joseph in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Verse 23 to 27. So when Joseph came to his brothers, brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him in the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, "We will. What will we gain if we kill our brothers, brother, and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our own brother, our own flesh and blood." His brothers agreed. I mean, when you look at Joseph, he had setback after setback, but with the power of hindsight, he and we can see it for what it was. And we can learn a lot through Joseph. So let's just spend a moment talking about the power of contradiction. To go from being a favoured son with an incredible dream, as Joseph was and he had, to being naked, in a well, in slavery, etc., is a vast contradiction. And we can fall into the trap of living our life of faith based on circumstantial evidence. Of course, Jesus says, You'll know them by their fruit. And so mistakenly, we look at a car, a house, a salary, career, clothing, and say they're moving in the right direction. They're blessed. They have fruit. But to live a life of faith based on circumstance is in direct contrast to Joseph's life and to Scripture. Now, Jesus did say you'll know them by the fruit. But it also goes on to say that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, long-suffering, self-control. So here's the thing. It matters not really what car you drive or what house you live in. Circumstantial fruit will come, but we can't live with the lust of the eye and call it faith. You see, Joseph had a God dream, but he found himself sold into slavery. God's providences often seem to contradict his purposes, but even then they are serving his purposes and working at a distance. Let me say that again. God's providences often seem to contradict his purposes, but even then they are serving his purposes and working at a distance. <coughs> you know, the shepherds will tell you that the darkest part of the night is just before the dawn. The coldest part of the night is just before the dawn. And for Joseph, the nakedness, the well, the loneliness, the abandonment, where was God? Well, God was always working. God was always working for him. And I want to say that in your life, instead of looking at the contradiction and saying I'm on the wrong track, maybe you should see it as contradictory circumstance and see God at work, even if he's at work, seemingly at a distance. I think I've told you this story before, if you've been in our church uh, for, for any length of time. But there was a time and a season in my life where I, I had been asked by my pastor to step away from youth ministry and become an associate minister in the church that I'd been serving in. And this seemed so contradictory to the call of God upon my life. You see, I'd always felt that God had given me a dream and a burden for the young people of Great Britain. And yet here I was moving from youth ministry into working more with adults and, and learning the skills of ministry required to lead adults. And it felt like a real tearing. It felt like a real contradiction. But on the very day that my pastor was asking me to come out of youth ministry and focus on adults, at the very same day, in a different part of our nation, a group of ministers were having a conversation about myself becoming the new youth director for the youth movement of our group of churches. I didn't know this was happening. In one, in one day, I was being faithful to a contradiction. And over here, God was preparing the way 
for me three years later to step into the role of leading the young people in the youth groups of our nation for a season. I say that to say this one more time. God's providences often seem to contradict his purposes, but even then they are serving his purposes and working at a distance. Listen, it's the power of contradiction. As long as your heart and motivation is right. Remember this one more time. God is faithful and God is able to bring about in your life the very thing that he has set in motion. Love you deeply, church. Again, Happy New Year, and I'll see you tomorrow.